Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in this video I need an intervention. Um, yes, I broke my book buying ban again and I've broken it spectacularly this month. Um, I have bought far too many books but in my defence, in my defence, four of them were series, no, six of them, six of them were series continuation and I'm allowed to buy books if I want to continue a series. Yeah, it's not an excuse really, is it, um, for buying them all in one month, uh, but here we are. Okay, so let's just talk about the book, shall we? And um, yeah, you can shame me in the comments instead. So, the first book um, I've actually been waiting for for 12 months. Uh, see here, I've got Lancelot by Giles Christian, the lovely gold one there. I read that last year. And I thoroughly enjoyed it and I really wanted to read the follow-up um, and that book is Camelot. Um, now I pre-ordered this book in January, February I think because I knew I wanted to read it. I've been waiting for it uh, since I read Lancelot last year. It is set around the legends of Arthur and Camelot is going to follow Lancelot's son Galahad. Um, so we are going to get more into the world of Arthur and I'm really looking forward to picking it up. Um, I'm fairly certain it's going to be on my July TBR. Like I say, the reason I've been waiting for it for so long is because it only came out last year and it came out in hardback. I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to having books in the same format on my shelves. I don't like to have a mixture of hardback and paperback. If, they're, if I've bought the first one in paperback, the rest will have to be in paperback too. And that means I have horrible waits for books. It took 12 months to bring this one out in paperback. Um, pre, like I say, pre-ordered it in January, February time. And it actually released in paperback in June. So this arrived in the last couple of weeks. And I'm looking forward to picking that one up. So that one is not a fail. That one is actually in line with my books I'm allowed to buy for the year. So we're not calling that one a fail. So if you've seen my uh, May wrap up, you know that I watched the Shadow and Bone series when it came out in May and that I actually started the audiobook. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So in the series continuation, I'm allowed to buy a series if I enjoyed the first book and want to continue with it. I went to Taunton, um, which is the nearest town to me, and I went to my local The Works and I picked up the box set of the three. I've taken it out of the box. Oh, they're a bit shiny. Um, I've taken them out of the box because I don't tend to like the boxes. They tend to be a bit flimsy. Um, but anyway, so I have Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. And again, I really want to carry on and read the rest of the series. So, like I say, I read Shadow and Bone. I listened to it actually on audio um, because the audiobook had been hanging around for a while. And I really, really enjoyed it. This book is about Alina Starkov, who discovers that she is um, part of a group of people called the Grisha who have special powers. She finds out that she is actually has a specific power uh, she is a sun summoner and this is quite important in Ravka the world where she lives um, the country where she lives because uh, there is something called the fold which is an area of darkness that splits Ravka in two and it has some horrible creatures called the Volka in it who eat humans um, and she has been long awaited because she is supposedly able to heal the rift and get rid of the darkness uh, she has two love interests in this book mal and the darkling um i like mal i thought mal was a bit wishy-washy in the book i didn't mind him in the tv series uh but as with everyone else who has read this series over the last few years since it came out i think it's about 10 years old now um if you've read shadow and bone then you're in love with the darkling and when they've cast Ben Barnes as um, as the Darkling in the TV series, there's really quite a lot to love. Uh, so I am on the Darkling side. Um, I think he's just a troubled man who uh, who maybe needs some love. 
Um, but I don't know. Siege and Storm and Ronin Rising might change all of that for me. Uh, but I will see. Again, I'm hoping to get to these very, very soon and finish the series and you'll see them in a wrap up. Um, so like I say, it is these, although I'm on a buying ban, then definitely Ruin and Rising and Siege and Storm I was allowed to buy because I want to continue the series and I want to continue the series very, very soon. So then rather fatally for me, I went across the road and I went into Waterstones. Now, I did have a reason for going into Waterstones. I was going in to pick up another book that was a series continuation. Back in March, I read a book called Dragon Mountain by Kevin and Katie Sang. This is a middle grade book, a fantasy novel about four children who discover dragons and they then have to go on a quest to save the world from, um, from the evil dragon of death. The second book in the series came out at the beginning of June and I really wanted to read it. I loved Dragon Mountain. Um, I'm actually nagging my sister to let my nephew read it because I think he would enjoy it as well. But I went in to pick up the sequel and that is Dragon Legend. Um, I've already read this at the point that I'm... So again, it fits the, the premise of my book Blind Ban. It's a series I wanted to continue and because I'm filming this right at the end of June, um, I actually wanted to buy this because I was doing a readathon, a month long readathon in June, and this book fit the theme of that readathon because um, I was on a team called Middle Grade Monarchs. Book two carries right on from where book one left off, so I can't really say very much about it. But again, there's some danger for the four young people. Uh, one of the young people has disappeared and they have to go and find them and then they have to go on a quest to uh, try and discover uh, some pearls which help to give magical powers. If the eight pearls are together then they will give the um, holder great great powers and they are trying to stop the dragon of death from getting all eight pearls. Again this book leaves off on a bit of a cliffhanger uh, book three, I think, um, which is called Dragon City, is due out at the end of this year. So I'm looking forward to picking up the next book in the series when that comes along as well. And um, I, like I say, I'm nagging my sister to let my nephew read it because I've got this one ready for him to read once he finishes the first one. And that's where it all went wrong. Um, while I was looking around in Waterstones, uh, I couldn't actually find Dragon Legend on the shelves. I didn't look very far, obviously, because I've got a copy. Um, but while I was in the 9 to 12 year old section, what the Americans call middle grade, I decided instead of picking up uh, Dragon Realm, Dragon Legend, because I couldn't find it, um, because I wanted another middle grade pick for the readathon for this month or for the month of June, um, and because I've been waiting for my sister to read this forever, and she still only read a few pages of it. I decided to pick up my own copy of Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. So again, this is a book aimed at the middle grade age range, the 9 to 12 year old. It's about a young girl, 10 year old girl, Morgan Crow, who is fated to die on her 11th birthday. However, on her 11th birthday, a man called Jupiter North comes to her and whisks her away to the land of Nevermore. There she has to go through four trials to uh, try and gain entry to the Wondrous Society um, and it goes from there. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I, as you can see my bookmark is in it uh, so I'm, literally I've read that much of it. I've got that much left to go. I'm probably going to finish this today, the day that I'm finishing. Um, depending on whether I give priority to editing the videos that I'm filming or whether I give priority to reading. But I'm really enjoying this. I'm really loving it. And again, it's another one. My nephew uh, saw this, read the back of this uh, when my sister took it home. And he has been nagging my sister as well to finish it because he wants to read it too. So I'm thinking what might happen is that because my nephew really wants to read it, is that once I've finished with it, my sister's going to be handed it and told to give it to my nephew to read. Um, so to console myself further, I took a wander around the fantasy and sci-fi section and I picked up Joe Abercrombie's The Blade Itself. 
this is the first book in his first law trilogy um i read half a king a few years ago which is the first book in another series of his and i wasn't blown away by it i enjoyed the writing style um but this book has been quite hyped up a lot very recently on booktube a lot of fantasy readers seem to be picking it up or talking about it also a friend of mine um last september october said to me have you read any of joe abercrombie's books um have you read the blade itself um and it's kind of been sticking in my mind as you know is this one that i really should pick up and read and when i saw it there on the shelf i didn't actually look at the blurb on the back i've literally just read it before i started talking about it um it's a fantasy novel set in um a world where it looks like there are outlaws barbarians politics um so yeah so i'm not yeah i'm not really sure what it's about all i know is that it seems to be a well-loved book on booktube um a friend of mine asked if i'd read it they wanted to know whether i thought it was any good or not so i decided to pick it up and um here it is so i'm not sure when i'm going to read it um so this is where i've really broken the book buying ban um because i'm really not sure when i'm going to read it but i'm sure that i'm probably going to give it a go soon like i say i did like um half a king just not enough to continue with the series at the time um although half a king it, when I think about it, I do have vague flashes of scenes in my head. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this before. I'm not someone who sees scenes playing out in my head as I'm reading them. I'm someone who just sees the words flowing through my brain. Um, there's there's a type of reader for it. Um, but we're meant to be not that common, but it does seem to be a common theme on YouTube, on BookTube. Um, that that's how most of us read uh, and that's probably why we read so much but I'm really looking I'm looking forward to picking it up I'm looking forward to giving it a go like I say his writing it didn't inspire me to move straight on to the next in series but it did stick with me in my mind in some ways so yes yeah, so when I was asked about this I thought you know what I need to give it a go and then as I was wandering out of the fantasy and sci-fi section um, a notice caught my eye that um, there was a table of books and they were signed by the author so I decided to have a look because I'm a sucker for signed books I don't own very many but I'm a sucker for them when I see them um and this book is Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas uh this is a hardback book beautiful red sprayed pages love the the cover um I really really I actually decided to read the blurb before I picked it up I didn't just pick it up because it was signed I did give it a read and it is about a girl called Anna who has always been told that magic is wrong magic is um bad and her magic needs to be bound so we are heading up towards her birthday when the, her magic is going to be bound so that she can't use it but she then meets people who changes her perspective on that and from there there's going to be adventures uh this i think i'm not sure if this is adult or young adult um it's definitely not middle grade fantasy uh it's definitely um definitely going to be i think more ya or adult but i'm really looking forward to it um it's been blurbed by robin hobb who is one of my all-time favorite fantasy authors I actually have three books of hers missing from my shelf um and i need to go and get those as well uh but yes robin hobb has praised this book so i'm really looking forward to picking it up i think it's one that i'm going to want to get to soon the cover is gorgeous the inside um cover is just red with gold writing um there's nothing special on it but it sounds very very intriguing and i had to pick it up as soon as i picked as soon as i saw it and read the blurb and then I decided to treat myself. I was feeling a bit down in the dumps. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I live with my mum and that I'm looking for my own place to live. Uh, I've had a bit of a disappointment. I went to see a flat recently, which I liked. Um, and I was looking into maybe going back for a second viewing to see if I really liked it. Uh, but when I did the sums, I couldn't afford to live there and continue working uh, where I work. So... 
unfortunately I had a bit of a disappointment so I consoled myself with more books hey what's a book where I'm gonna do when they're not happy um they're gonna read and they're gonna buy books but in my defense these are this is something that has been triggered by um one of my favorite authors uh she has has a team of fans who she sends out early copies of her books to because she's self-published in the main um her self-published works she sends out to a select group of her fans before they uh release date um so that we can read them and leave reviews for her on release day and she then um put up a form so that we could actually buy a signed copy of the paperback of the book I don't have any romance books or like no I've got fan there's a little bit of fantasy romance um but I don't actually have any of the romance books that I've loved over the years on my shelves because they're pretty much all on my kindle um I did have the 50 shades of grey but I got rid of those um because I didn't actually like them all that much um but yeah so I actually bought um the signed copy of the last release she had which was the two week stand and I keep looking down there because it's there for another video that I'm about to film um but I did um my favorite romance authors um video a few couple of months ago and I've been thinking about a book since then and that book is revved by Samantha Towell I decided to treat myself to a paperback copy of this book I absolutely loved it this book is about Andy and Carrick Carrick is a racing car um driver uh, for, specifically in Formula One Andy is a Formula One mechanic and she joins his team Andy does not date uh drivers she refuses to date drivers um and she tells Carrick that they can only be friends and from there grows a wonderful friendship between the uh two of them and from there they fall in love and it's how they get to their happy ever after I have read this book a few times on my Kindle and I just really really wanted a copy of it physical copy of it on my shelves because I want to show the book off I want to show all these great romance novels that I really really loved um I want people to be able to see them and not just hear about them um so that one has been added to my shelves and then along the same lines um there is another author that was on my favorite romance authors list her first series of books have been filmed and made into a tv series by uh, a company called passion flicks they specifically buy the rights to romance novels and turn them into films and in this case tv series and that series is driven by Kay Bromberg. I have talked about this book many times before. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so I didn't just buy Driven um, because Driven came out uh, on the TV series about three years ago now. I think I think it was 2018-2019 that um, the, the actual series came out. Um, they were supposed to film Fueled last year but then Covid hit and they weren't allowed to but Fueled is coming out on July the 22nd so I didn't just treat myself to Driven I picked up Fueled um, and then because you can't have part of the series I picked up Crashed as well so I have all three books in the series um, again I'm probably like revved I'm probably not going to read them they are just for show on my shelves I have Kindle copies of all three books so and I do read and reread them. I re I've read them quite a lot. I don't always talk about them when I read them, um, but I just love them. Again, this is a story about a race car driver. Um, I can't quite remember the sort of right, but it's American um, motor motor racing, um, and it's about Colton, who is the racing car driver, and Riley, who is a uh, she is a care worker for um children in a home and she they've passed the throne together and colton is a playboy he uh he's damaged as well one thing Kay bromberg does really well is write people with issues um he has some quite deep rooted issues and 
Riley then helps him with uh, coming to terms with those. Not intentionally, but yes, um, I absolutely adored this story and I'm really pleased that I've got them for my shelves because again, like Revved, I've got them so that you can see them um, and I doubt these are going to be the last romance novels that I actually buy physical copies of. It might be that I only buy them from Sam Towell and Kay Bromberg for now. Um, I can't really think of any other romance authors whose books I'd want on my shelves, um, even though I've probably read a lot of them, but that's... But yes, um, I really think that it, it, they should be displayed. If you enjoy them, they should be displayed and, and you shouldn't be shamed for enjoying romance. So those are all the paperbacks that I bought, um, or hardback in the case of one of them. I have actually been buying books on my Kindle as well, so I really have been naughty. But in my defence, two of them are free. Two of them I had 40% off. And who can knock an offer when you get it? So, as you know, I have a Kindle um, and I do most of my reading usually on my Kindle because that's where the majority of my books are. Uh, I'm also an um, Amazon Prime member, so the beginning of every month I get an email inviting me to download a book for free. In June, they were allowing us to take two books for free because June was their Prime month. So the first book that I picked up, I'm blaming Corrie over at Corrie's Corner on Instagram because she kept bigging it up and posting pictures of it. And that book is The Mixtape by Brittany C. Cherry. Uh, it's a romance novel. It's about Oliver, who is a rock star, and he is reeling the death of his twin brother and bandmate. Uh, it's about, then about his love interest, who is Emery, and she comes into his life. And I think there's going to be a fake dating trope in there. Um, which I've always enjoyed, but we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and we follow their love story and how they get to their happy ever after. Apparently, it's really really good. It's um, in the romance community. The people that have reviewed it, that I've seen review it, uh, have talked about it positively. So I'm looking forward to getting to that one soon. And again, because it was on Prime Reading, it was free. So then my second choice um, on the Prime Reading is Song of the Forever Reigns by E.J. Mello. This is a fantasy romance book and it's set in the fictional world of Adelore and specifically within the Thief Kingdom, which is a mystical world that um, unless you're part of that kingdom, it's only mythological and you don't really know if it exists or not. This follows um, a young girl called Lark who is... Um, a witch um, and she is part of a trio of witches who are very very powerful and her voice is, is the power that she has. It's discovered that someone outside of the Thief Kingdom is siphoning off poisons to give to their subjects and Lark is sent to investigate. She is set up to um, be the bride of the Duke of Lackland uh, who is the person who is committing this crime and from there they discover that actually all is not as it seems they have to learn to trust each other as well as trust themselves and um the story goes from there i don't really know anything else about it from that but it certainly fulfills the brief of romance and fantasy for me um which is a genre that i really enjoy so i'm looking forward to picking this one up sometime soon the next kindle purchase was again a pre-order from earlier this year and it is the continuation of a series that I've been reading and I've been waiting for this book for years. Um, I don't know how many years, I can't remember the last time this author um, put out a book, but she's been very sporadic in recent years. Um, I think there's been some health and family issues going on um, behind the scenes. So she hasn't been writing as much. Um, but she's got three releases this year and I'm really looking forward to reading all of them. And the first of those releases is Fury of Persuasion. This book is by Corrine Callahan. This is book four in her Scottish Dragons series. And this is about Vyroth and um, Na Nicole, who is a human female. Uh, Vyroth is a dragon shifter and they both end up in a dragon kind prison. Um, from there they have to help each other escape, learn to trust each other as you do, find the happy ever after 
um, and get to safety. Um, and we take it from there. Again, I'm really looking forward to picking it up. Corrine Callahan hasn't released a book for years. She's got three coming out this year. I've got them all on pre-order because I really want to um, get up to speed with this series. I'm thinking I might have to do a reread at some point um, just to, to refresh my memory of all the background because I haven't read them for a few years. Um, I actually discovered her back in 2012 um, when I was reading The Black Dagger Brotherhood as well. And I actually really, really enjoy her stories. So I'm looking forward to picking this one up and this one should be a great book to read in the next month or two and then Amazon sent me an email telling me that two books by an author who's who I follow um I could pick them up for 40% off if I wanted them but I had to do it within a certain time frame they are books two and three of a series um I haven't read book one yet however I have read another series and the the two series link together um, the series that I'm talking about is the Saga of the Exiles by Julian May. Um, this, these books don't specifically follow on from the um, Galactic Milieu series, but the way I've been told is that they come round in a full circle. So I was recommended to read the Galactic Milieu series specifically to start with in Intervention. Um, by a friend at work quite a few years ago now and I read it back in 2015 I think 2015 2016 I can't quite remember exactly when and I really enjoyed it and from there I moved on because from there the Galactic Milieu series follows directly on from Intervention so I read through to the end of the Galactic Milieu and she said now you have to go on to the saga of the exiles um which features a character from the Galactic Milieu series um, who has done something really wrong and he goes back in time to the time of the Pliocene era um, on Earth and it goes from there. Now I've got The Many Coloured Lands which is the first book in the series. I have it ready to read. Um, again at the point that I'm filming this I'm still not quite set on what my July TBR will be but I'm thinking this might be in there. So when they said books two and three were 40% off, knowing that I've enjoyed the writing style beforehand, I picked them up. Book two is The Golden Talk and book three is The Non-Born King. Um, there is another book, I think, in the series, but basically the events of this book are supposed to lead you up towards the events that happened in Intervention and that's where you go round in a circle. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually reading um, reading through because my friend has also told me that once I get to the end of the Saga of the Exile series I'm going to want to read the um, Intervention again um, and through this um, through the Galactic Milieu series because there are events that happen in the Galactic Milieu series which link into what happens in the Saga of the Exile series and things that happen in the Saga of the Exile series then link into um, the galactic milieu series and intervention links the two together so i'm really looking forward to picking them up i really enjoyed them um i had a whole um they're, they're actually science fiction um but during the reading of the galactic milieu series uh the time that these books were written i think they were written late 80s e-readers didn't exist um flat screen tvs mobile phones were just on the cusp of coming into being smart watches smart technology um and she wrote about all of it she was an author out of her time um and she just wowed me the whole way through and i i just i really really don't um think that I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get those wow moments um, in the Saga of the Exile series because it's set so long ago. But uh, I really do think that her writing is going to be very, very enjoyable. And I'm probably going to want to investigate her books outside of that as well uh, once I get through this one. Right. So this is a hell of a, a book haul to uh, to edit. Um, I'm not looking forward to this. 
Uh, I've been rambling on for 40 minutes now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, please do shame me in the comments down below because that's way too many books to buy in one month. I've spent far too much money, even though two of them were free and two of them were 40% off. Um, and yes, uh, yes, feel free to shame me in the comments down below because I need to stop buying books um the books that i'm going to buy in future i am sticking to my book buying ban from now on and i'm only going to buy books that continue a series that i want to continue reading so if you've enjoyed this video then please give me a thumbs up and if no you're not already then subscribe to the channel um chat to me down in the comments down below i love hearing from you all and i upload videos every monday at 6 30 p.m uk time and i will see you all again soon bye